Hi, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever time you're tuning into YouTube. My name is Valerie Hartman, and I am a registered nurse. I work in hospice, I've been in the field for about 21 years, uh, 15 years in an inpatient hospice unit, and since 2002, I have been coordinating the complementary therapy program at Holy Redeemer Hospice in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I wanted to post something on YouTube, something brief that really describes and defines the role of the CTRN and the um, ongoing growth of integration of complementary therapies in a hospice program. I'd like to do that because there's so many uh, hospice team members, ID team members, pastoral care, registered nurses, social workers, home health aides, volunteers who have such a strong interest in utilizing um, therapies that really work with our senses. Um, and they recognize the value, but they struggle with integration or finding ways to get it utilized mm -hmm. in a hospice program. And I would just also like to say that should extend to healthcare overall, but hospice is an area where we can really utilize it and find ways to utilize it that in the future maybe all healthcare can utilize. I ramble. However, um, what I'd like to do is give a very brief uh, instruction of what it is I teach in our complementary therapy um, settings. The first thing that I teach is uh, the definition of complementary therapy. What is it? So complementary therapy is the use of alternative therapies in um, and alongside traditional healthcare practices. So alternative therapies I usually define as uh, being our past, although there are present too. Um, complementary therapies are present and integrative therapies are going to be our future. And we do have some integrative therapies that are happening now in healthcare settings. What does that mean? It means that in our past, alternative therapy was one of thousands of therapies that are used worldwide that are, were not traditionally used in our healthcare system for treatment, for preventative healthcare, um, for coping and stress management, and for literal healthcare. So that might be herbal remedies, acupuncture, acupressure, healing touch, guided imagery, um, aromatherapy, there there literally are thousands. And if you want to learn about more of the therapies that are defined as alternative, you can go to the um, uh, National Institute of Health website and look for NCCAM, the National Center for Complementary and Alternative Medicine. The government does have a website established to uh, teach about and to um, to research these modalities for Americans to better understand them. Okay, so alternative therapies were our past when uh, there was no use of them in our healthcare system. Someone might have cancer, they received all the curative treatment they could have in, in the States, uh, and they went to another country to seek out some alternative treatment or therapy. Today, uh, with all the increased information and understanding about the use of these modalities, many Americans spend lots and lots of money of their own to utilize them and to find practitioners who know how to help assist them in making choices about how to use them. So today, there's more of what we would define as complementary therapy use. That's where the traditional American healthcare system may or may not know much about alternative means, but they recognize that Americans are using them. So someone in the oncology setting who is receiving curative treatment for cancer may also seek out an integrative um, practitioner who might order things like herbals and certain body work therapies or nutritional plans to help aid them in their body in healing. In addition to the traditional um, care, chemo, radiation, etc. So it is trying to find the best of both approaches, Western and Eastern, to come together to have the optimum outcome of healing. Um, that steps us into the realm of integrative medicine, which is our future. 
integrative medicine is going to be 10, 20 years down the road where we have evidence-based research on how to use um, different uh, therapies. So that might be results in acupuncture, reflexology, aromatherapy use, herbal medicine use, and we'll actually have data and we'll actually know how to use them and integrate them integrate them into treatment plans. And the physicians are going to know how to do this. And the nursing staff and healthcare staff is going to be taught and educated along the way about um, integrative medicine. We're going to have integrative therapies available and uh, well instituted into our healthcare settings. So it may be that an example I like to use is lavender essential oil. We already have studies that um, help us to uh, feel confident in knowing that lavender essential oil, pure therapeutic grade essential oil, can be utilized to help with restlessness or sleeplessness um, in, let's say, the skilled nursing facility in, in geriatric care, uh, where someone's having trouble, their days and nights are turned around, um, or have anxiety, restlessness at night. So certainly we might use some sleeping aids, may or may not, but we also might have a diffuser in the room and the nurse would have an order for, you know, four or five drops of lavender essential oil every four hours to the night hour of sleep till someone wakes up and um, that would be instituted. So that is a very simplistic view of what integrative therapies might be in the future. Um, so complementary therapy is our present and the healthcare settings that are um, establishing complementary therapy programs um, using more of these therapies that way um, would be in end-of-life care, hospice care, palliative care, um, oncology, then curative uh, into wellness care. Um, I think that many Americans are using it preventatively. Um, and in healthcare, also geriatric skilled nursing facility is a perfect setting to start to utilize um, therapies that really reach and um, the central nervous response to fear, tension, anxiety, worries, and that would be any of the modalities, um, music, art, touch therapies, um, pet therapy, horticulture therapy, all of them in their own way work and communicate and reach to speak to people, to develop trust in relationships in the healthcare settings, to literally ease the nervous system response to fear, which is the fight or flight response, bring someone into a relaxation state, which would be the parasympathetic nervous system state. And, uh, you know, as a nurse and a healthcare provider who utilizes these therapies, mostly bodywork therapies in end of life care, I do see many, um, many situations where stress is high, fear is high, sustained, and when someone's very, very sick and their bodies decline, um, you know, and stress hormones, adrenaline and cortisol are high and sustained, that takes its toll on the body. And so you do literally see symptoms that are related to the stress response. And, um, you know, the, the systems of the body that are sensitive to stress that change in, uh, in response to hormone release and stress. Um, primarily would be respiratory system, so you have increased shortness of breath when, some, when you're fearful. Gastrointestinal system, intractable nausea and vomiting. I, I like to cite the example of when our five-year-old children go to kindergarten for the first day and they have a nervous stomach. You know, that, that's an example of how the fight or flight response affects the GI tract. And, um, and in hospice care, of life care, if someone has a disease that affects their GI system and they're anxious and fearful on top of that, it just makes symptoms much worse. Um, a little bit of renal involved, you know, uh, holding fluid, little fluid retention around high stress tension states. And the literal feeling of anxiety, you know, just feeling that fight or flight, I gotta get up and go. Which leads to sleeplessness, poor eating, digestion, and that all spills into behavior and emotions and 
you know, our hope, our depression, um, coping. So it's all very tied together. And, um, and so I just wanted to share a little bit of this information online. Because it might be the best way to get uh, the information out. And um, if you know anyone who's interested in doing this work, who wants to integrate it in healthcare, spe specifically hospice care and of life care, and struggles with that, you know, I, I hope that um, you direct them to this this YouTube video, that they hear that. Um, you know, there is movement in the direction of integration. It is going to happen. I'm one of several who are very committed to ongoing work to help the lay public and healthcare uh, faculty understand that complementary therapies aren't soft, that when used correctly, when seen through the eyes of a healthcare practitioner who's a professional nurse or chaplain or social worker, um, you know, we utilize these therapists, therapies to, therapists and therapies to really bring someone into a state of peacefulness and a relaxed nervous system which matters. So, um, I think that's all I'm going to say for now. It's been, I don't know how many minutes now. Eleven? That's long. <laughs> it's too long, maybe. And I appreciate you listening, and I'll try to post some more. Thank you. Have a good day.